story today. This is a real story, and it is sad in a way, but um, it's from a support group, and uh, no names. You don't know the person isn't on YouTube. There's, um, you know, so it's it's sort of anonymous. So this woman who is at least 60 years old, okay, um, she's married. I don't know if there's any adult children, but she's married and um, lives in a house that there's a mortgage on, that there's not much equity. It's not in the best neighborhood and the house needs a little work. And her husband has been out on disability for 14 years. He's been disabled for 14 years. And I think that it's like military related because there was some mention of the VA or services through the VA or something like that. So I don't know the extent of her husband's disability, if it's physical, mental, or both, and if it's related to service in, in a war or if it's, you know, not... I don't really know. But so for 14 years, she's been the sole caregiver um, to her husband, and she's exhausted. She's exhausted because now she's getting older and older. And, and you know, the, I think that they're struggling a little bit financially. There's no vacations. There's nothing fun. She's got this drudgery life. Well, her husband has a brother that lives about 2,000 miles away. And her mother-in-law, who is widowed, is still alive and 83 years old and lives about 20 minutes away. And the mother-in-law owns a property that is, you know, paid for for many years that's on 10 acres. And not only is she the caregiver full-time for her husband, but she's become the caregiver for the mother-in-law and her 10 acres, including yard work. And um, she's exhausted. She just can't do it anymore. And um, the brother that lives 2,000 miles away never comes and visits, says, well, I have a family and I live 2,000 miles away. And he lives in the Boston area. And so everything seems to have fallen on her shoulders. And now the mother-in-law, who is 83 years old, is telling her, give up your house and move in, like her son and the son's wife, move into my house so that way you can be here to take care of me full time and my son, which is your husband, full time and my 10 acre property. And when I drop dead, half of it goes to my son that never does anything, that lives 2,000 miles away. And the other half goes to my son who is disabled that you are married to. And she was questioning all of this. And she was like, I'm exhausted. I have no time for myself. There's no future. There's no, no guarantee that if anything happens, I get put out in the street. And she said, if I'm going to be this miserable and exhausted, I might as well just get a full-time job, a full-time job. And um, her husband doesn't want any outside help coming in. He wants only the wife to do it, and she just can't do it. She, she just, I mean, so she, she wrote the story. She put in more details. I can't remember them all. So women are going in there, and one of the first things they started saying that I totally agree with is she should get an attorney to see what her rights are like a, an elder attorney, because she's probably like, she might even be, I don't think she's 65, but so, um, yeah, so, so the woman is saying, you know, yeah, that's a good idea, the attorney. Then she's saying, I wouldn't mind it if the mother-in-law moved into my house, but I don't want to give up my home and then, you know, be put out in the street, which I think is very reasonable. Women are putting in a lot of positive suggestions for her. And I think some of them are being, or the majority of them are being way too nice. They're telling her all these things she could do to help. And I'm like, Wait, how is that her responsibility? Um, it's not her responsibility to be a case manager and all of that. And um, I think I was kind of, 
Some people might say I was mean with what I posted to her. I said, they're sucking the life out of you and you're gonna be dead before they are. And um, I even used the word divorce because she was like, you know, I'm doing so much. We should be financially, or I should be financially compensated for all I'm doing. And all the women in there agreed with her. And the husband said, oh, no, no, no. In my family, we don't do that. We, we, that's just the way we roll. Well, that's his family, not hers. They are using this woman like a workhorse. And I, I told her that. I posted things in there that sound mean. And a couple of women came in and agreed. And, and, you know, they even took it a step further. But when someone gets older, it's one thing if you're helping out with a grandchild, a spouse, even an elderly parent. But if you keep letting yourself get run ragged and sucked dry, you will become sick yourself. And then who's there to take care of you? I know because a lot of times in my life, I'm not going to share personal stuff. I've been in the position where I was a caregiver for family members. I did favors for neighbors and so-called friends. Did a lot for a lot of people. And then when my time of need came, all these people were gone with the wind, you know? There was just a couple of people that already had their hands full that were there for me. And the number one person was my sister. I, I feel bad to this day that I burdened her when she already has enough on her plate you know, and um, I tried to make things easy for her when I thought I was dying. <laughs> That's another story. I mean, I shouldn't laugh, but it was, it was really um, quite the story. But I, I felt bad for this woman that she allowed herself to get sucked into. I understand it's her husband, but there should have been help with just her husband and herself in that house. And now if as if that isn't enough. They're trying to suck her in to taking care of an 83-year-old mother-in-law and her 10 acres, give up her privacy, give up her comfort, her security, and her peace of mind with not one financial compensation. But by the way, half goes to the brother 2,000 miles away. Some people suggested that she put herself on a salary. You know, um... I don't want to say any personal stuff, but like if my sister ever wanted to compensate herself financially for any time she spent in dealing with my mom, I would be on board with that. I would be on board with that because she's doing it, not me. Who am I to tell her that she her time isn't worth anything? So um, anyway, it's a sad story, but I hope this woman learns late in life to develop healthy boundaries. It sounds mean, but if you really think of it, when you get to a certain age, you might have a hard time taking care of yourself, let alone 24-7, 365, a disabled spouse, and then on top of it, to be expected to be running back and forth to a mother-in-law who's kind of selfish and her 10 acres? Oh, no, no, no. And, and I was mean. I said, you know what? What would these people do if you got a divorce? And then other people said, what if you have a heart attack and drop dead? What would they do then? You know, they can't be like totally dependent on you and sucking the life out of you. So I, I know this is not an exciting story. It's probably not told very well. I'm not the best um with like conveying um, things cleverly, but it's just a story that I heard. And um, if there are any older people, you know, watching this, you know, yes, it's wonderful, wonderful. If you're in a position to help your parents out, I think that's wonderful. But I mean, this woman's story, I mean, I'm leaving out a lot of the details. I don't even know how this woman has time to go to the bathroom, let alone anything else. And I think it's killing her. It really is. So anyway, everyone, have the day that you deserve. Bye.